Okay, so let's illustrate how we can explore parameter sensitivity analysis within the program. And this provides insight as to what may be limiting fraction absorbed uh, for a particular compound. So as we've seen before in this graph, we, we suspect that um, these compounds uh, in this particular area of, of the graph are most likely permeability limited compounds. So we can investigate that at a higher level of depth using our, our parameter sensitivity analysis tool. And the way we would do this is, for example, select this compound and then using this button over here to update the spreadsheet, we can see you know, which compound that is. So here we go. And now going to our um, parameter sensitivity analysis icon here, open the corresponding uh, setup uh, dialog. So we don't necessarily need to do this for two doses. We can just take say a 10 milligram dose uh, to look at this. Of course, we wanna select the same physiology, uh, human that we had before, and also the, the same dosage form being an immediate release tablet. And now what the program is going to do is vary both solubility and permeability and see how uh, the fraction absorbed is projected to change as a, as a function of that. So what you see here is that the scale for changing solubility is pretty different for, from the scale for changing permeability. And that's because these two models have very different ranges. There's a much larger range of solubility within our solubility model and solubility in general. Uh, of course, it's, it's based on the experimental data, um, whereas that, that range is much more, uh, much smaller for uh, permeability. So, so what we're gonna do here is again, select this compound and run uh, a parameter sensitivity analysis. And what the software does is it returns a curve, which shows us that uh, if we fix solubility, so this is the this is the well simulated uh, calculated solu solubility and permeability um, for for the compound, and then on each side we have runs with simulated values, different values of permeability in this case and solubility here. So we do, so the program does eight runs with different values for solubility and eight runs with different values, four on each side, okay? For both solubility and permeability. So in total, 16 simulations uh, changing one variable at a time. So what we see here is if we fix, say, permeability and change solubility, there's literally no effect on the projected percent FA. And that is because the compound, as we intuited over here, is a permeability limited uh, compound. Okay. On the other hand, if we fix solubility and vary permeability, then we see that we can potentially affect uh, fraction absorbed, the, 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 the predicted fraction absorbed to a considerable effect. Okay. So that is uh, one observation that we can make. Now, we can close this one and we can actually go back to the graph that we had previously. Remember that we had the inverse graph before where we had graphed um, percent FA as a function of, um, of the jejunal permeability. And then we had colored all points with solubility using a log scale. Okay, so that's the graph we had we have before. And what we see is that in this case, we have compounds which we project, these are uh, projected to be solubility limited uh, compounds. And how would we in investigate that at a high level of detail? Well, 
in the same way. So we can select this compound, see where it, see which one it is, and then go back to our um, parameter sensitivity analysis tool and do the similar similar calculation. Okay, so we're going to take same physiology, dose, etc., and perform the run. And now we see the inverse situation where if we fix solubility, again, th this is the, um, the model value for both solubility and permeability, and we investigate with the same way, four runs on each side, high and low, uh, you know, varying solubility by 250 fold on each side and permeability uh, two and a half fold on each side. Uh, so again, we're doing a total of 16 runs. If we if we fix um, solubility to this point and modify permeability where there is no projected change in the fraction absorbed because we uh, we have a, a solubility limited compound. Okay. On the other hand, if we fix permeability and we vary solubility, then we can uh, we can potentially uh, uh, get a pretty dramatic effect on the uh, projected fraction absorbed uh, of that of that compound. So it, in this case, it would be very useful to to seek uh, enhanced uh, sol solubility for this for this particular compound and uh, rescue it since um, it is the uh, the solubility parameter that is gating um, the, uh, the the fraction absorbed. So anyway, I hope that was a, a, a useful analysis, and you can see how uh, we can infer from even from this graph what the what the projected behavior of the of the compound is likely to be. And again, with the uh, parameters sensitivity analysis tool, we have the ability to investigate this uh, at a much uh, higher level of detail. Okay, so let's shift gears and see how we can use experimental data as part of an HTPK simulation. Uh, what's important to understand is that HTPK is not an, an all or nothing situation. Um, you can calculate PK parameters at a high throughput all, all in silico, so that is entirely from structure if you so desire, but you can also use and should use experimental data in order to bring more accuracy to the simulation if this data is uh, available to you. So let's go back to this data set that we used previously, which is this um, subset of the this um, enamine diversity set. So we're going to load these 2,000 compounds as we've done before. And now we're going to hypothesize that we have experimental solubility data for these compounds and that we want to rerun our previous percent FA and percent FB calculations, taking this new data into account. So let me first show you what this data looks like. and. just open it um, in notepad and this is data that I have I have generated for the purpose of the of the exercise to show you how you can do these sorts of things and that's again simulates the case where we would have experimental solubility values for these compounds so the file assembles the identifier which is actually essential for making the, the correspondence with the with the spreadsheet and this experimental solubility value that we wish to import. And you notice here that um, I have actually removed the data for a couple of the compounds just to show you how the software behaves when um, data is missing. Okay, so let's go now and import these values into our spreadsheet. So we've seen in a previous tutorial how to do this. We go to File, Import, Compound Attributes, Browse to find our file with the missing data, and 
the first line contains the column label, so we don't want to import that. And we'll make the correspondence based on the identifier field of these compounds and import the experimental solubility values. Here we are. So we've, Im we've imported the values and we see that we have missing data for compounds two and four. And so what we want to do now is go back to this um, percent FN percent FB panel that we've used before. We're going to use the same human physiology that we used previously, the same dosage form as immediate release tablet. Now we don't really need to simulate multiple doses for the purpose of the this exercise. We can just use the default uh, 10 milligram value that is uh, has been entered, and we'll calculate both percent FA and percent FB. But now instead of um, of using our native water solubility uh, model. Uh, S plus SW, we're going to use our experimental values. And the way you do this is by going into the advanced settings. So again, by default, the software is using our uh, native water, pure water uh, thermodynamic solubility model. Now what we can do instead of doing this is point the software to this column. So that's what those little three dots here are for, this little side box. You can click on this and then now select uh, this column as the attribute selection, this experimental solubility column, and just say OK. And now you could do this for any other um, property that is involved in the HTPK simulation. So if you had experimental values for permeability or for uh, the blood to plasma ratio or, or really any other parameter that is involved in the, in the simulation, then you could, uh, you could substitute it. Um, so again, instead of using the model, it, it, it could use your experimental values. So you click OK, and now we're going to run using these experimental values. So it's proceeding at about the same speed that we've had before. Again, this the, the software is multi-threaded, so it goes rather uh, rather quickly. And uh, one of the things we notice is that the software did not complain that uh, we had missing values for the experimental solubility. And while well, you're going to ask me, well, how did it accommodate this uh, situation? How was it able to provide the simulated values if it doesn't have the experimental uh, solubility uh, or any solubility value to to use. Um, and that, that's a very valid question. And actually what it did is that it used the, the experimental solubility values for all of the of the molecules. However, for those two that had missing values, it reverted back to the S plus SW, so the uh, pure water thermodynamic solubility model that we have um, in Enmet Predictor. And uh, you may also ask me, how, how would I know that, uh, that it did that? Well, it's because I, I did rerun the calculations specifically uh, with, uh, with the model and the output values for all the parameters uh, you know, came to be the same. So I'm <laughs> pretty confident that that's, uh, that's what it did. So anyway, again, I wanted to get you familiar uh, with using experimental data as, as, um, as part of uh, simulations. And again, that, that is something that you can push pr pretty far because uh, we, we provide the ability to revert to experimental data for a lot of the of the parameters or at least the most important ones that are involved as part of the HTPK simulation.